Hey guys, Centurion here at ESO Vault. I thought as long as I was going to be in the West Weald for a while, I might as well be comfortable, so I got with the local real estate agent. She came up with this place, the Mary Vine Estate, old winery that went belly up. Nice, and not too far from skin grab. My only complaint so far is the death hounds that linger right next to the front entrance. Of course I talk to the local constabulary and they say there's nothing they can do. We have our hands full here, there's a daedric invasion. You know, the usual crap. Always with the excuses, then I have to go and handle it. Well, anyway, today I've got a Stamina Dragonite build for you. This setup uses dual wield on the front bar and two-handed on the back bar. My Necro video I just did explored the new Scribe skill, Traveling Knife, and how it could be used to buff dual wield skills like Rapid Strikes. Today's Dragonite build is going to push Traveling Knife to the limit by adding even more dual wield skills into the rotation. And this video is a culmination of what's been some pretty exhaustive testing of Traveling Knife on the PTS. So after this, I'm going to mix things up a little. I'm going to look at some builds that don't use dual wield and some of the other scribe skills and see what I can make of them. I really want to know if any of them are useful on heavy attack builds, for instance. Well, whatever I figure out, you guys will see it here on the channel. That's enough of the introductory stuff. Let's get on with today's build, the Magic Knife. Before I go to the character sheet though, I think I'll talk to my armory assistant and get some input. What? Isn't that what you guys do when you're working on a build? You're ready to mix things up, aren't you? Ah! Gather your gear and we'll cook up something good. Exactly what I was thinking, my orc friend. And what I've been cooking up is a Dark Elf Dragon Knight. Dark Elf is a top stamina damage dealer race. As always, I encourage you guys to play a race you're interested in, but I'll put up the tier list for anybody that wants that info. Thanks to Hack the Minotaur for this list. For my food buff, I'm using Lava Foot Soup and Salt Rice, and I like that because it gives me a lot of stamina and stamina recovery. My Monday Stone is a Thief, and that gives me extra critical chance. Up at the top of the sheet, you can see that I have all 64 attribute points in stamina, and that's what you should do for a damage dealer. It's all in on Magicka or Stamina, depending on the skills you're using. I actually remember to swap to the dual wheel bar this time. And that's better because you want to know what base stats are on the damage bar, not what they are on the back bar. I've got 18,000 points of health, and that's really too low. If I was running this on my live account and not on the test server, I would put two or three health cliffs on my armor, and that's exactly what I do in a fight at the end of this video. 31,000 points is plenty of stamina, I could easily give some of that up for more health. Stamina recovery is average for a PvE build and that's at 1300. Weapon damage is at 4800 and crit chance is at 40%. And for PvE I don't talk about penetration because as long as you have a source of major fracture that's all you need. I always put that into the build but if you're going to run with a good tank all the time you can look at leaving that out. And resistances aren't something I get into for a PvE damage dealer either. In PvP, that absolutely comes into play, and if you're going to do stuff like the Infinite Archive, it'll be a factor there too, but those builds are an entirely different animal. I want to point out that all these stats here are raw, unbuffed stats, and those are going to change in combat. This build requires potions of weapon power, and you'll need to level the alchemy skill line to get the medicinal use passive. Potions of weapon power give me increased weapon damage and increased weapon crit. They'll also increase my stamina recovery and give me some stamina immediately when I use one. Okay, let's get to the mission critical part, and that's the skills. What do you think about the skills I've got lined up? I can think of 18 ways to kill a man with nothing but a rock. Improvisation, creativity. That's what makes us warriors. Well, I've got five skill slots and an ultimate on two bars, so hopefully it won't come down to using a rock, but you never know. Let's look at those skills, starting on my two-handed bar. I go in the order that I use the skills, and every skill should be preceded by a light attack. First up is Stampede from the two-handed skill line. Stampede does instant damage on impact and damage over time in the target area for 15 seconds. This powerful skill also increases my weapon damage if an enemy stays in the area of the damage over time effect. That's because the skill works in conjunction with my greatsword having the infused trait and a weapon damage cliff. Next I use Noxious Breath from my Dragonite Skills Kit and this does great upfront damage and damage over time. On top of that it applies Major Breach, reducing the enemy's armor by 5000 points. Now I use Cleave from my two handed skills. This causes upfront damage and bleed damage over time. It's a conal attack so it'll hit all targets within the cone. Next is Eruption, which is another Dragonite skill. 
This causes flame damage over time, and because it's from the Earth and Hard skill line, I'll get minor brutality, increasing my weapon damage. This buff is unique to the Dragonite, and it'll apply to anyone I'm grouped with as well. I have my burst heal on this bar, and that's Resolving Vigor from the Assault skill line. A viewer brought it to my attention that if you do the PvP tutorial, you can actually get this skill without having to do any real PvP. Shout out to Cinetarthrax5618 for that, and I apologize if I didn't pronounce that right. Last on this bar is my ultimate, and that's Ice Comet from the Mage's Guild skill line. If you don't want to level the Mage's Guild, just run the Dragon Knight standard here. That's actually significantly stronger, it just doesn't work so hot on bosses that move around, so I usually go with Ice Comet. Okay, let's look at the dual wield bar. First on this bar, I'll use Deadly Cloak from the dual wield skill line. Deadly Cloak does damage to enemies around me for 20 seconds and gives me major evasion, reducing the damage I take from area attacks by 20%. After that, I use Barb Trap, which is from the Fighter's Guild skill line. Barb Trap deals bleed damage for 20 seconds and gives me the minor force buff, increasing my critical damage by 10%. Then I use Blood Craze, which is another dual wield attack. Blood Craze does damage over time and gives me a small heal that can help keep my health bar topped off. Next I have one of the new scribe skills, Magic Knife. Magic Knife is my customized version of the Traveling Knife Grimoire. The three scripts I've selected cause magic damage, give me minor berserk, and cause enemies to be susceptible to the dual wield ruffian passive. The Ruffian passive causes enemies to take 15% more damage from dual wield attacks and that's a huge buff. Normally this only applies to enemies that are stunned or otherwise impaired. Being able to use this bonus at all times is a big plus and I'll be casting Magic Knife multiple times during each rotation. Now that the Ruffian passive is active, I'm going to use Rapid Strikes four times. After that I'll cast Magic Knife again and then use Rapid Strikes three times. I cast Magic Knife a final time and then swap back to my two-handed bar. At this point you may be wondering why Magic Knife and why not Bloody Knife which does bleed damage. And the answer is Sustain. There's no way I can sustain Bloody Knife so by selecting the Magic Damage script and using Magic Knife I've switched the resource pool the skill draws on making Sustain manageable. Now if you want to run a Destruction Staff on your back bar you can sustain Bloody Knife. Just substitute Blockade and Elemental Susceptibility for Stampede and Carve. I ran the build both ways and the results are the same. The last skill I have on this bar is Flawless Dawnbreaker and this gives me a boost to damage just for having it slotted. It's also handy when I need a low cost ultimate. Alright, that's it for the dual wheel bar so let's go see one of my usual sparring partners and see those skills in action. Don't get too comfortable out there, remember. A well-rounded fighter beats a one-trick etchartere every time. Good advice. So the build did 50,000 points of damage, and that's going to be plenty to do any content you want to do. If you want to be on the leaderboards, you'll have to get good at dynamic rotations and come up with some endgame trials gear. But if you just want to be able to experience the whole game, this setup will do fine. I told you guys in the last video that I thought I was using the Zahn monster set as a crutch, so I ran Selene here. Selene is perfect for a Dragon Knight with a lot of melee damage. Because Selene has a weapon damage bonus, that's going to dovetail perfectly with the Dragon Knight's minor brutality buff. And with that much melee damage happening on both bars, Selene is going to proc continuously. Rapid Strikes led the way in damage here, and I already talked about how the Magic Knife skill buffs dual wield attacks. Rapid Strikes is also getting buffed by my gear. Let's go ahead and take a look at that gear. On my front bar, I have Daggers of the Order's Wrath, which I crafted in the High Isle. Order's Wrath is the strongest crafted set in the game, and I feature it a lot because it's pretty much universally useful on damage dealer characters. My main hand is Nurnhone with a Fire Glyph, and the offhand is Charged with a Poison Enchantment. 
I have three body pieces to round out the five piece set. On my back bar I have the Maelstrom's Perfected Greatsword. You have to beat the final boss of Maelstrom Arena on Veteran to have a shot at getting this drop. You can get the non-perfected version from the normal arena. Use that if you have it, that'll work almost just as well. The Maelstrom Greatsword adds a lot of damage here because it buffs every hit of rapid strikes. So get your hands on the best version you can get. No Maelstrom Sword? No worries, just run Order's Wrath here. Whatever you're running, make sure you have the Infused Trait and a Weapon Damage Glyph. You want to get that buff to your weapon damage. This setup works with the Stampede skill to give you that. I already told you guys I was wearing the Selene Monster Helm, and Selene's Web is a fairly easy dungeon, so get that if you don't already have it. For this type of setup, it's hard to beat. My final set is the Deadly Strike set, and that's a 5-piece set from Cyrodiil. You've seen me use this before, and when the spamble attack is a channel and there are lots of damage over time skills, this is a tough act to follow. This is still considered an S-tier set, even years after its introduction. Get it from Cyrodiil or buy it from Guild Traders, whatever's easiest for you. The jewelry is all bloodthirsty with weapon damage glyphs. I should mention that all my body pieces are medium except for one light piece and the traits are all divines. Enchantments are stamina, but you'll want to switch two or all three of the big pieces to health. Alright, that covers the gear. Let's look at champion points. The blue slottables here are Fighting Finesse, Deadly Aim, Thaumaturge, and Wrathful Strikes. Well, that's it for today's build, the Magic Knife. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked the video. If you did, be sure to hit the like button, and if you want to see more content like this, please subscribe to the channel. There's a fashion show at the end, followed by a fight at the Ostomir Miramore Mosaic. Wow, that's a mouthful. That's a spoiler there. So if you don't want to see that before Gold Road is released, and you'd rather experience it for yourself next month, stop the video during the fashion show. But if you want to see me in a desperate fight for my life, go ahead and watch that. I dropped the Selene Monster Helm for a Ring of the Pale Order, and I'm wearing one piece of Storm Fist for more recovery. I'm running the Bloodthirst Morph instead of Rapid Strikes, and Brawler instead of Carve. The whole fight is a brutal 15 minute slugfest, where a lot of the time I'm just staying alive by spamming Brawler. I've cut the fight way down here to keep the length of this video from getting out of hand. Well that's it. Again, thanks for watching. Have a great day and enjoy your adventures in Tamriel.
back again? <laughs> Good. We can stop training when we're dead. <laughs>